standing on the campus of an institution designed for higher learning under the name of Valdosta State University. This is the Ghetto Free Press, KYRC, which means Know Your Rights Campaign. All the students that come here to Valdosta State University are entitled to know what is going on in their beloved community. However, the people of Valdosta State University do not know that on 24 May, a 14-year-old Pine Grove student whose parents have gone to all news media outlets to try and tell their story so the people in Valdosta, Lowndes County, South Georgia, the state of Georgia, and around the nation and world would know what is going on in this metropolitan city of South Georgia. This 14-year-old student was handcuffed, tackled by a Lowndes County deputy, Robert Atkins, and the mother and father were never told that their daughter had been handcuffed or anything of this nature. So they picked it up on Facebook because somebody had enough God in them to try to record what took place. This 14-year-old girl was charged with the felony of fighting 
at school and for striking or hitting an educator, which is listed as a felony. The teachers at Pine Grove Middle School had enough courage to write statements to show that this 14-year-old black African-American girl indeed never touched an educator. Yet, the charges have not been dropped against this 14-year-old student. She was treated as if though she was the aggressor when she was actually defending herself from two people. This girl was suspended for five days. The people that struck at her, at the 14-year-old girl, was never handcuffed, never taken down or tackled to the ground. And it seems as if though, we are living back in the days of Jim Crow. Why do you say that, Mr. Rhymes? Because when the mother went to the Valdosta Daily Times, local television stations and radio stations for the most part, nothing was published. So this means that the parents who have children at the Pine Grove Middle School do not know anything about this incident. Now look, the deputy that filled out the statement saying that this 14-year-old black African-American female had hit a teacher. It was proven by statements that the educators was never assaulted. So how could it be that members of law enforcement do not want the truth? This is a 14-year-old girl. And yet the Valdosta Daily Times editor, Kay Harris, and the local powerful news media networks in South Georgia have not even touched this story. But I have filled it up on YouTube because I believe that the people in America should not be as the people in China or in some other third world nation. So we must ask ourselves a question. Why is it that the news media in South Georgia did not consider this newsworthy enough to report it to you. Now, the mother went before the Honorable Judge Ellaby this week, a couple days ago. I was in the courtroom. They tried to file charges against the deputy for, a, for excessive force, making false statements, handcuffing an innocent American citizen. Judge Ellaby ruled that nothing was wrong in that process. I am here to say to you today that it is indeed a disgrace when we go to those in power to seek justice and we can't find justice nowhere in Lyles County and the state of Georgia. And so now, I want to say to you, what are the young people to do? What are the righteous to do in a wicked world that is seemingly controlled by Satan or some of its little small Jesuses in 2013. I haven't finished yet. It's going to get better. It's going to get better in a minute. On May the 25th, the day following this 14-year-old girl being tackled and handcuffed for charges she never committed. Look, look at Lyles County High School. I was denied access or freedom of movement onto the property of Lyons County High School. I'm standing on the university campus, the highest institution of learning in Valdosta, Lyons County, and is taught in the state of Georgia as being a higher level of learning for people who seek to know what is going on in their world. Now look. I was not even driving my normal or regular vehicle. I was in a rental car. But it seems as if though the death of Kendrick Johnson 
on January the 10th, 2013, has made people do things that are unbelievable under our form of government. Look, look at what I'm about to say. I was in a rental car. Sheriff Deputy Thomas pulled me over out of the crowd as I was going on to Lowndes County High School, the 2013 graduation and the Lowndes County Board of Education meeting that was going to take place earlier. Deputy Thomas told me I could not go on the property because I was on a trespass warning ordered by Wes Taylor and that that trespass warning had been in effect for two weeks at that time. So today marks 100 days. Let me repeat, 100 days. Let me repeat, 100 days that I have been restricted and can't go on any part of public property in Lowndes County school system. Now look, I haven't violated no law. Magistrate court, superior court, federal court, CID, criminal investigation department at the Lowndes County Sheriff Department, Sheriff Prine and the federal court don't have nothing on me because there is nothing on me. Yet they banned me, a retired military veteran that served during the Vietnam War, Kuwait, and other great wars of this nation. Yet, my rights have been violated. Yet the Georgia Secretary of State, Georgia Attorney General, Governor Nathan Deal, the United States Justice Department, nobody seemed to be concerned about the American citizens' rights here in the United States of America. So we must now ask, if our local news media, if they cared about keeping you informed, when I went to the Valdosta Daily Times, when I went to the TV stations, when I went to the radio station and told them what had happened to me, do you think that they reported it? No, just like they did not report the 14-year-old girl that was tackled, handcuffed with her hand behind her back when she was the victim. She was the victim, not the aggressor. Yet those that assaulted her and pushed her was never put in handcuffs. And I don't even know if they were charged with a felony. A false felony, I might add. So now by Judge Ellaby ruling or denying the mother and father the right to have this deputy brought up on charges, that deputy and other law enforcement members must, have, must feel a sense of empowerment, a sense of empowerment to do the same thing not only to black children, but to white children, Japanese, Germans, Koreans, Muslims, Christians, Catholics, Hindu, holiness, and you. And they don't have to answer to nobody. We who send our sons and daughters to fight these wars in foreign nations, trying to preserve the rights of others, we had better wake up. And so I came out here in the front of the Valosa State University to say to America, if you are not going to protect the citizens right here in the United States of America, then return all of our children from foreign nations. Listen, send all of our sons and daughters from foreign nations. Send them back home so they can fight for our rights and our protections and the protections of our children and coming generations. Now that may seem treasonous. That is not treasonous. The founding fathers wrote it in the record that when our government will not stand up for what is right in America, that the people have a right to rise up against that government and make that government do what the government was set up to do. And that is to protect, preserve the rights of the citizens in the United States of America in alignment with the Constitution, 
of the United States of America. Now listen, we studied in civics lesson when we were children that Russia, China, Germany, and other third world communist nations disrespect their citizens. But I am a proud personal. I take this personal. If they could do this to me, charge me, or stop me for 100 days under the heading and under the leadership and authority of Sheriff Prime here in Lyles County and school superintendent Wes Taylor, a person who have never committed a criminal act in his life of 61 years of age. So how could it be that they would ban me if they could do it to me? There are people that attended Valdosta State University, Georgia Military College, Wiregrass Technical College. They could be stationed at Moody Air Force Base. They can stop them too and charge them for nothing under the heading of criminal trespass warning or obstruction of a police officer or interfering with the duties of a police officer or speeding or DUI or breaking, they could break into your home for whatever they want to say. And there is nothing that you could do about it, especially when you don't have the money at like the rich and the famous. And so you can be charged, just like many of our black children are sitting in jail and prison and on death row. Poor white children and Japanese children and Korean children and other children are sitting in jail. They haven't done nothing wrong, just like they got me for criminal trespassing. And I didn't do not one thing wrong, and the magistrate court don't have nothing on me. The superior court don't have nothing on me. The federal court don't have nothing on me. The district attorney under David Miller don't have nothing on me. CID don't have nothing on me. The sheriff Prime don't have nothing on me except, except the fact that I use my camera and my tape recorder to report what others refuse to report because it seems as if though they have aligned themselves with the old Valdosta 1860 charter mentality that was displayed right here in this metro city on the second floor of City Hall. And here is what it said. And let me say, add this. I had passed this charter many times until God allowed me to look over and see it. Paragraph 100, section 11 said that the mayor and council shall pass all proper and necessary laws and ordinances for the control of slaves and free persons of color and to control, suppress, and abate all nuances arriving from hogs, dogs, horses, or other livestock strand at large in Valdosta. Now, control, when our South Georgia news media failed to report about the 14-year-old daughter, isn't that control? Isn't that suppress? Isn't that a bait? All nuances arriving from slaves or free persons of color? Is that not the same thing? When my rights were violated on May the 25th following that incident by a sheriff deputy, did not they control me and still controlling me after 100 days? Are they not trying to suppress the truth that I have here on YouTube that you're going to watch in a minute? Are they not trying to abate and call me a nuisance because I revealed the truth, truth revealed the truth as St. Luke or St. John 832 said, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And if anybody fight against truth, no matter how big their churches are, no matter how white the church is, and say that it represents purity, but when you fight against truth, you are fighting against God. Don't you understand that? So here I am in conclusion. 100 days, this military veteran discharged honorably 
have been restricted from any school in Lowes County by a false charge of criminal trespass. Look, the Ku Klux Klan didn't do that to me. Barack Obama didn't do that to me. The white Christian identity group didn't do that to me. The Crip, the Blood, the Folk Gang didn't do that to me. A member of law enforcement did that to me. And so we cannot trust our children that attended Valdosta State University, if we can't trust them to come to this university and get an education and not be incarcerated and use what I hear the young people say, you come to Valdosta on vacation and you leave on probation. Yeah. So now as I close, I want to say to you, we had better wake up in America because if we fail to wake up and allow these people to keep make us fight Talk about I don't like white people, or I don't like black people, or I don't like gooks, or I don't like, you better stop that. They are using that to make fools out of all of us. It ain't about no skin color. With what I do with a, with a quarter million, a quarter of a million views on my YouTube channel, white people are the one that support me. In fact, they support me more about what I'm doing than black folk. Now put that in your pipe and smoke. Let me tell you something. When it comes down to doing what's right in God's world, color is not even on the equation. The radar, the satellites can't even pick it up. This thing is what Apostle Paul said in the volume of sacred law. For we fight not, listen, we fight not against flesh and blood. White people are flesh and blood. Black people are flesh and blood. Japanese are flesh and blood. Koreans are flesh and blood. Germans are flesh and blood. Russians are flesh and blood. I don't know about the extraterrestrial, but we all are flesh and blood. And Apostle Paul said, we fight not against flesh and blood, but against powers and principalities of power and spiritual wickedness, wickedness, wickedness in high places. So the sheriff of this county is in a high place. And so he can charge me to stay out of the Lowndes County school property place by his authority. Or Wes Taylor, the superintendent of Lyons County School System, is in a high place and he can charge me or take out an invisible trespass warning on me. Wait a minute. It's going to get better in a minute. So what are we to do? I serve my country honorably. Never been picked up on any drug charges. Never been picked up for DUI. Very few speeding tickets. Never assaulted my wife. Never abused my children. Never robbed a convenience store. Like some of our black youth have been charged. But now we must ask a question. How many of our children, not just black children, but how many of our children now are on probation? in jails, in prison, or on death row because somebody in uniform lied on them like they lied on me, like they lied on the 14-year-old black girl at Pine Grove Middle School. And now they got to go out and spend their hard-earned money to get a lawyer to defend themselves, not against a gang member or a hate group, but against those people that are called peace officers. So now, nobody, nobody have said anything about them doing what they have done to me. So it seems as if though, I'm gonna have to do what the young people are doing. I'm gonna have to turn to a gang. I may have to join the Crips. I may have to join the Bloods. I may have to join the new Black Panther Party in order to get somebody to stand with me. Because if they could do this to me, they can do this to you. They can do this to your children. This, they could do this to coming generations of our children. And so I'm here to say to you that I am determined in God's word to make a difference. So once again, I'm standing on Valdosta State University campus.
I want to make a statement. The statement that I'm making. If law enforcement that, are, that gets their authority from the state, if they lied on me, and they did lie on me, if they lied on the 14-year-old black girl, and they did lie on her, how many more people, let me say it again, how many more people did they lie on? How many people now are serving time in the Lyons County Jail? How many people are serving time in the prison because some person in uniform lied on them? And now, I'm going to say to you, I'm going to say to you that it is indeed time for a change. And I'm going to take a break now. But I want you to know that it's 100 days. 100 days that I have been under this restriction. Legal terms a criminal trespass one. And I have not been told by the chief of police, by the Lowndes County Sheriff Pride, by the Secretary of State, Brian P. Kemp, the Georgia Attorney General, the Governor of the State of Georgia, or the President of the United States. Nobody have told me why for 100 days my rights have been violated. As a black man, that don't fear white folk, don't fear black folk. I only fear God. And because I fear God, I love God's children. This is not a black or white thing. This is a right thing. And if America does not mean to be fair after over 500 years to all of her citizens, then I most humbly say to America, please take your flag down. Take it down and, 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 and don't say that you are about the people. Say you are about the rich and the famous. Or you are about those in the cliques and among the slicks. I want to thank God. And this is my final closing. I'm, I'm going to close now. The next minute I'll be closed. I just want to thank God for allowing the South Georgia news media to show to the world, let me repeat, I want to say it this way. I want to thank the South Georgia news media for allowing God to use them to show the world a true picture of America's democracy. Yeah. So those who fail to report about the 14-year-old being handcuffed and tackled at Pine Grove Middle School I thank you for letting God use you to show the world a picture, a true picture, of America's democracy. To those who put me on this criminal trespass restriction for over 100 days, I want to thank you too for allowing God to use you to show the world a true picture of, God's, uh, of, of, of America's democracy. I want to thank you, I want to thank the people who are in city and county governments and state governments and the Justice Department. I want to thank God for using you to help show China and Germany and other nations of the world about America's democracy. Yeah, look, I did no wrong. That 14-year-old girl didn't even attract, didn't even hit a teacher. And the very teachers who she, who they, who the sheriff that they say she struck, made a statement that she never touched them. Now China, you take notice of that. Germany, you take notice of that. Since nobody in America wanna take note of it, somebody got to understand that God is God. And your arms are too short to fight against the God of the righteous. 
And I want to say to you, have a nice day. I'm going to continue doing what I do because the truth must be told. That means, again, anybody at Valdosta State University, anybody, could be riding here in Valdosta. Law enforcement can pull them over and accuse them of any crime they want and never tell them why they were being stopped, why they are on a restriction. I guess they can arrest you and not even tell you why you're being arrested. Do you not know that that 14-year-old girl of parents was never told that her daughter had been tackled, handcuffed, and accused of a felony, and that the deputy that wrote it in the, wrote it with his own hand that she assaulted a teacher? Do you not know that that turned out to be a lie? Now I'm not. I don't mean to call it deputy a lie, but the the teacher said that's not true. So you make it whatever you want it to be. So we must conclude by saying, if we send our children here to Valdosta State University, and I'm gonna say it, and it needs to be heard, because none of these students at Valdosta State University know anything about, they can be picked up by law enforcement and nothing will be done about it. Whatever they say, it'll be done against these students. And we have elected officials who seem not to care about the rights of these students that come to these high levels of learning. But I care about them. If I could go overseas willing to fight in these foreign wars for the rights of foreigners that I never met, don't you think I should care about all these students here at BSU? And that's what I'm doing. I'm reporting to you what the Valdosta Daily Times and your TV station and radio station will not tell you and they are emboldened by not informing the people. Once again, we got to give you the truth because Jesus said, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. That means without truth, there can be no freedom. Once again, this is Boston GBR on YouTube. We doing what we do because it must be done. It is time now for the truth to be told so the lies can be exposed. Once again, this is the Ghetto Free Press. KYRC, which means Know Your Rights Campaign. You have a right to stand up and speak truth when your news media try to keep you deaf, dumb, and blind to the times and unable to make intelligent decisions based on facts. Bye-bye. We gone.